everybody, my name is Tanya and this is my April and May book haul. So I haven't been acquiring a lot of books lately so I didn't have enough again to do separate book hauls for April and May but I've amassed uh, a stack of books now that I thought I would show you and let's just get into it. I can't remember exactly the order that I got these but it happened over the last couple of months. The first one I've got here is something that I should have read already and I haven't because I haven't and that was the main pick for the Feminist Orchestra Book Club and that is You Can't Keep a Good Woman Down by Alice Walker. I picked this one up in preparation for the book club. I just never quite got there in May. So I am now two months behind because I didn't finish the uh, April pick either. And we're now in June. But I am still planning on reading all the books from the book club. One way I'll get my shit together. And uh, yes. But in either case, I've got this here and I'm very much looking forward to it. This is a short story collection by Alice Walker. I have previously listened to The Colour Purple by her, uh, narrated by herself, and it was absolutely fantastic. Opinions have been a little bit split from what I've been hearing about this one, um, but I am still very much looking forward to it. Obviously, as it's been picked for the Feminist Orchestra Book Club, which, as always, links down below. Um, this one's going to be dealing with uh, different themes of feminism, but also with um, race combined with feminism coming from Alice Walker's perspective. And I think it sounds incredibly powerful from everything I've heard, and I'm just very much looking forward to it. It's only a teeny tiny thing, but heading into term topple now, I don't know when I'll get to it, but watch this space. Next up, I have something that was very kindly sent to me by the publisher, and that is an art copy of Helena Miami's new short story collection, What Is Not Yours Is Not Yours. Kind of dropped the ball on this one a little bit. It came out in late April, and I read the first two stories during the um, Jewish 24 Hour Readathon, and haven't got back there again yet. So I'm hoping that I can sit down and actually read this one and review it soon. As I've spoken before, I absolutely adored Mr. Fox by Helen Omi last year. I've just uh, recently finished Why Is For Witching by her, which I didn't care about quite so much, but I still have very high hopes for this short story collection. The two short stories that I read during the 24 hour readathon I really enjoyed. I think I'm going to go back and restart this and focus on it a little bit clearer because when I was reading this I was getting quite tired by that stage of the readathon, um, so I think I'd like to throw myself into this properly. This one is published by Picador and was very kindly provided to me by Pam McMillan in Australia, and I am very much looking forward to actually properly reading this one. Next up I have something that I actually won, and that is The Girl Who Second Over Your Fairyland, in a Ship of Very Making by Catherine M. Valente. This one I won uh, as part of Erica from Erica Rebels, a uh, challenge she did as part of Drew's 24 hour readathon, which I was super excited about, and so I gave Erica a couple of choices um, to pick from for my prize, and this is the one that she sent to me, which I'm super excited about. I made a very, very, very small start on this during the book buddyathon, um, but I haven't continued on at this stage because other things were pressing. But I really enjoyed that first little little tiny bit that I read, so I'm hoping I can just dive into this world soon. I've heard such fantastic things about this series uh, through BookTube. I've so far only read Six Guns Snow White by Catherine M. Valente, which I adored. Um, so I'm really looking forward to experiencing this series as well. This one, as I have no doubt you're already aware, follows the character of September, a young girl who uh, is transported into fairyland and all the adventures that happen there and just there's such love for this series on booktube I am looking forward to finding out what all the fuss is about because I'm sure it is quite warranted. The next is something completely different and something that I'm very excited about and actually need to sit down and read because it's not going to take me any time at all and that is this one which is Wookie the Chew, The House at Chew Corner um, which is written and illustrated by James Hans. This is kind of exactly what it sounds like, it's a mashup of Winnie the Pooh and the Star Wars universe uh, reimagining Han Solo as Chris Robin and Winnie the Pooh is now Wookiee the Chew or Chewbacca um, and uh, Eeyore is now an AT-AT and uh, Piglet is R2-D2 as Droidlet and it's just it makes me so happy. I first became aware of this um, through an article somewhere that was showing some of his artwork and I will link James Hans's uh, Website down below, I actually bought some prints along with this as well, which, you know, has um, the characters in different traditional uh, Winnie the Pooh illustrations, um, but of course reimagined as Star Wars characters, and they're just so gorgeous and so delightful. So I've got a few of those that also came with the book um, that I'm going to get framed and hang up somewhere because it just makes me so happy. Um, but this is the little book that he's made to go along with the illustrations that he's done. Um, and yes. It's just the retelling of Winnie the Pooh, Star Wars style, and I, I just what's not to love about that? 
Next up, I have two books that I've already shown that I picked up as part of my Stella Prize long list read through. And so they are Hope Farm by Peggy Frew and The Natural Way of Things by Charlotte Wood. Um, these are the two that I picked up, the rest I have borrowed from the library. And so as I mentioned in the video that I did about this, these are part of the Stella Prize long list. Um, and if you're interested in finding a little bit more about the Stella Prize, I'll link my video about that down below. These two were part of the shortlist as well, and the winner was actually this one, The Natural Way of Things. And I'm very much looking forward to getting to the both of these. Her farm is set in 1985 and is following the character of Silva, uh, who moves with her mother and her mother's new love uh, to a rural hippie commune and kind of what happens there. And so I think it's going to be very fascinating. And then we have The Natural Way of Things by Charlotte Wood, which as I mentioned won the 2016 Stella Prize here in Australia. Both of these are Australian novels, as is befitting of uh, Stella Prize long lists. Um, the Stella Prize is a prize awarded to Australian women's writing. And for this one, I might just do the dreaded thing of reading you the description because I think it captures everything much better than I can. Um, but I'm looking forward to reading this one so I can actually talk about it properly because I think it's going to be a very interesting one to talk about. And so the description says, Two women awaken from a drugged sleep to find themselves imprisoned in a broken down property in the middle of nowhere. Strangers to each other, they have no idea where they are or how they came to be there with eight other girls. Forced to wear strange uniforms, their heads shaved, guarded by two inept yet vicious armed jailers and a nurse, the girls all have something in common, but what is it? What crime has brought them here from the city? Who is the mysterious security company responsible for this desolate place with its brutal rules, its total isolation from the contemporary world? Doing hard labour under a sweltering sun, the prisoners soon learn what links them. In each girl's past is a sexual scandal with a powerful man. They pray for rescue, but when the food starts running out, it becomes clear that the jailers have also become the jailed. The girls can only rescue themselves. And so I think this one is going to be completely compelling, completely fascinating, not necessarily in a good way, and I'm very much looking forward to reading this one and reporting back. Next up I've got something completely different again and just completely bizarre, but something that I am thoroughly enjoying and while it may not be my usual kind of thing or something you'd necessarily imagine that I'd be interested in, this I'm finding fantastic. And so that is From the Outer, Footy Like You've Never Heard It, and it's edited by Alicia Sometimes and Nicole Hayes. And this is a series of essays from different people about Aussie rules football. And you're kind of going, what? Um, but this is a really interesting take on uh, looking at football. This is uh, essays and personal stories from different people, but the kind of the more unlikely people to be uh, involved in football. And so we're getting essays from female voices and from indigenous voices and from people from the LGBT community and as it says on the back perhaps most dubious of all people with literary leanings so there are authors in here um, and all kind of writing about their personal experience or some way that uh, AFL has touched them I am most of the way through this one I have been taking it slowly I think I've been reading it since the start of May um, but a lot of the stories and the essays have really resonated with me I am uh, total one eye uh, supporter of my club. I AFL is probably the only sport that I actually follow, but I love it. I'm a member of my club. I uh, go to their home games. I don't let the football results affect my life. You know, you certainly get caught up in the score, but once the game's over, it's over for me. Um, you know, it doesn't have to have that long reaching effect on my life, but I would consider myself a passionate football supporter here uh, in Australia, and I am definitely enjoying this collection. I will talk a bit more about it when I've actually finished. But there are some surprising things in this and you know things that have resonated with me a bit more strongly or some things that you wouldn't necessarily expect when you're just looking at an NSA collection about football. For example there is an essay from the first female goal umpire and the pressures and misogyny that she's kind of being um, pressured with as part of that and it was you know just this wonderful feminist essay basically about her experience that I just I found completely compelling. Next up I have another book that was very kindly provided to me by the publishers, this time it is an e-version so hopefully this will show up okay, and that is Beyond the Pale by Emily Urquhart. This one you've likely heard uh, Jen from Dan Campbell talk about. This is Emily Urquhart's memoir um, and about her daughter who was born with albinism and Emily's kind of journey to look into the folklore and uh, stories behind albinism and the way that people with albinism are treated around the world and you know her own personal journey with it. This is a new edition that has just been published and it was sent to me by Jacaranda Press and as I said I'm very much looking forward to this. I think it's going to be a very powerful, worthwhile and compelling read um, about a topic that I don't know all that much about. And then the last book I picked up is something I'm a little bit nervous about. I'm not quite sure which direction this is going to go in but I'm going to give it a go 
and that is Smoke by Dan Valletta. You've probably been hearing a fair bit about this. This is being marketed as kind of the next Harry Potter and his Dark Materials, which are very big shoes to fill and, you know, instantly makes me nervous when something is compared to that. But there's enough interest around this one that I thought I would give it a go. Um, I am planning on reading this one with a group, um, so it will be good to kind of bounce our thoughts off one another and see how everybody kind of deals with that tag that it's been given. Um, and I am looking forward to seeing how it turns out. The premise behind this one is that sin is visible in the form of smoke and that the wealthy and privileged classes are taught how to suppress and to hide that smoke, uh, whereas the, the poor and underprivileged um, don't have those resources and so their, their sin is visible. And so it's going to be dealing with, I presume, uh, themes of class and of sin in general. I'm nervous, I'm going into this with some trepidation, but I'm hoping, you know, I'm not getting my hopes up in any way that it is going to be rivaling those books. And so I hope going into this one with realistic expectations, uh, it will be interesting to see how I feel about it once I've actually read it. So these are the books that I acquired in the months of April and May, along with Beyond the Power by Emily Urquhart in e-form. And I'm very much looking forward to everything here, as I always am. So if you've read any of these ones, let me know down in the comments what you thought of them and which ones I should get to sooner rather than later. And as always, thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.